Welcome back. It's Tuesday. We finally have some action here for the Giants. Actually, three moves that they have now made in the last 24 hours. Uh, the big news of the day is obviously the Jorge Soler signing for three years, $42 million that they have agreed upon with him. Uh, Susan Slusser broke it last night. So, uh, and, and a bunch of other people confirmed it between last night and this morning. So it sounds like that is going to get done, you know, pending physical, always the million dollar question for us Giants fans, but um, appears that's going to get done. Huge signing. Obviously we've, we talked about it on the uh, record the show we did a couple days ago uh, about Jorge Soler brings massive power. He's going to probably fit more as a DH than a corner outfielder on this team. So we're going to kind of discuss, um, you know, what he brings. We're going to talk about um, what kind of could not come next for the Giants and where this leaves them as far as roster goes and everything else. But before we get to that, we're going to talk about the other two moves really quickly. Um, first being they signed Amir Garrett, left-handed pitcher, a reliever to a um, minor league deal. Uh, not taking up a man on the or a spot on the 40 man roster. I think it's a good um, kind of low risk signing for them where uh, it, it kind of appears that he, Ethan Small and Eric Miller could potentially be competing for two spots in the bullpen, which would be good because then that would bring the Giants up to three left handed pitchers in the pen, which I think would be kind of ideal uh, having three lefties. So that's kind of what I get out of that. Uh, today, they also traded um, for Otto Lopez, a utility guy from the Blue Jays. They traded cash back to the Blue Jays. He is taking up a spot on the 40 man. Currently, the 40 man is full, so they are going to have a couple moves they have to make. That said, tomorrow they can put Alex Cobb and Robbie Ray on the 60 day IL, which would remove to um, take their two spots off of the 40 man. So they will have two open spots at that point. Um, Lopez, he's a career 298 hitter in the minors with like 2000 plate appearances has struggled in his time up in the majors, uh, only 25 years old from the Dominican. Uh, I, the takeaway I get from this is the fact that they have him on the 40 man. They think he has an, uh, a shot to make the team coming out of spring training. And I look at it as the giants, you know, they wanted more kind of middle infield depth. They wanted more um competition there and i think they're just hoping that one of the you know whether it's casey schmidt if he doesn't end up you know going out and winning the third base job or something like that but whether it's casey schmidt tyler fitzgerald brett wisely or Otto lopez i think they're just trying to hope that one of those guys uh steps up and wins the you kind of that backup infielder utility job because as of right now they're likely looking at JD, Luciano, Tyro, and then Wade and Flores. So they're going to probably want one more uh, infielder that can back up the other three spots. So I see him as just in competition for one of those. Um, he does not have any options. So if he does not want a job, they will have to DFA him. And, you know, he could end up in sack. He could end up claimed elsewhere. Uh, but now to the big news of the day, we'll talk about Jorge Soler. Um, so kind of where he fits. I mean, as we brought up before, he's got humongous power. Um, his power should play just fine in Oracle Park. Uh, if you kind of look at the spray chart, I put it up on the last one. He a lot of home runs he hits. They're going to be 20, 30 rows up in Oracle Park. So I don't think the park is going to be an issue. It's always played much more fair to right handed hitters. Um he has easily the most power that any player has had on the Giants since Bonds retired. So I think at some point in the next three years, he has a very good chance to break their um, 30 home run drought that they've had since 2004 when Barry last did it. Um, what he'll bring to the team, you know, here's a, actually I brought I had a couple team ranks that I put for the that I looked up for the 2023 Giants offense. They were 19th in home runs, 25th in doubles, 27th in slugging percentage, 26th in o OPS. And I could see Solaire kind of helping all four of those categories, uh, improving them a little bit. He's a legitimate cleanup hitter. Uh, if you look at the last three healthy seasons, so 
full healthy seasons he's played. I'm not going to count 2020 because it's a short season. And 2022, he dealt with, um, I think it was pelvic inflammation. He had some injuries that, and I believe he might have also had a back injury or another core injury that year. Um, so in 2019, he had 81 extra base hits. 2021, he had 54. And in 2023, he had 60. So this is a guy that hits a ton of extra base hits. He is looking to do damage. Um, steamer projects him for fan graphs. They're projecting him, uh, for, to hit 244. And this is in 144 games. He, they're projecting 244 and eight, uh, an 812 OPS, uh, 34 home runs and 91 RBIs. Now, you know, part of RBIs is it's dependent on opportunity as of right now. It's kind of questionable that what's going to be in front of him. Um, so we'll kind of see on that, but I think any giants fan is going to take those numbers. Um, so I do believe they still need to go out and get a number three hitter. I have been begging for it to be Cody Bellinger because he can help in all of the categories I listed below as, or before, as well as the team was 28th in batting average, uh, 24th and on base percentage and DFL in stolen bases. So, uh, he could also help in those while providing plus defense at multiple positions. So if they could get him, they would have kind of an ideal three, four hitter in the middle of their lineup and might be in business to have a decent season and be able to actually compete for one of those wild card spots. And I know there's questions about all the young pitching, but you know, Bob Melvin kind of brought up in 2012 when he was with Oakland, they actually won the division over Texas with five rookie starting pitchers. So it can be done. I don't think it's necessarily smart to count on it, but it can be done. And they do have, you know, Webb's obviously not a rookie and they do have Cobb. Hopefully it'll be back around June and then eventually Robbie Ray to maybe stabilize if they need it. But a lot's going to get put on the, the young arms there. So a little more about uh, Jorge Soler. He is not a platoon guy. He does have really solid career numbers, both against left-handers and right-handers. So that is nice. They are going to have an everyday DH at 14 million a year. I think that is very reasonable for a guy playing every day. That's going to hit in the middle of your lineup. Um, especially considering, you know, this team just paid 19 and a half million to Jock Peterson in 2023 to be just a, you know, the left-handed part of a DH platoon, which is absurd the more we think about that. So that is a positive. Um, it does create some questions with the roster, uh, and mainly guys like Michael Conforto and Wilmer Flores. Where do they fit? Um, as of today, I think Conforto would likely be the left-handed part of a uh, left-field platoon, possibly with Luis Matos. Um, I'm hoping Matos wins the job outright and they can just let him play every day, but we'll see there. Um, Flores is probably going to be the right-handed portion of a first base platoon mainly. And Soler is going to get to play every day, hopefully as a DH. And I, I hope he really never sees the field. He's kind of that bad defensively. He's like jock. He has no business being out there. Um, the, you know, Andrew Baggerly tweeted out yesterday that he could easily see uh, Conforto, he kind of is speculating that Conforto or JD could be on the move. I mean, we've already talked about if they get Chapman, I think it's a given that JD Davis gets traded. I just don't see a spot for him on this roster at that point, but you know, we'll see. They, they'd still have to come to an agreement with Chapman. Um, Conforto, you know, again, I think that kind of comes down to more if they're looking to make multiple moves or if they really believe in Luis Matos to take the job you know, kind of what route they want to go there. But I could see that being a guy that they want to move, uh, especially because part of the goal is to improve the outfield defense and they do want to develop guys. And with Matos looking like he's added some strength, he, he's a guy that I've already said, I think is going to break out this year. A lot of people feel the same way. Uh, so, you know, we'll kind of see there, but it does create some roster questions for the giants. Um, other things that we're going to look at here is currently the Giants stand with the competitive balance tax. This is going to put them at about 213 and a quarter million dollars. Uh, that's about 23 and three quarter million under the competitive balance tax, a first threshold. So they still have plenty of space there. 
they could easily land any, you know, I, whether it's Cody Bellinger, whether it's uh, Matt Chapman, they could easily afford one of those guys, considering they are still about $26 million under their last year's payroll because the the actual payroll that they're paying out right now is about 164 million so they're still well below that number and they're still under that threshold so they could very easily afford one of those guys and you have to think either one would probably involve them trading off a guy whether it's conforto yastrzemski slater uh jd somebody would be on the way out so um money is should not be an issue for the Giants um, still at this point. But, uh, you know, it is Scott Boris. He is still controlling the market. He's still blocking up everything. So it remains to be kind of seen uh, how that plays out. If he does have any, you know, if he does have any of his guys sign in the coming days. Uh, I think a lot of us kind of expect at least a few of those guys come off the table. I do think it sounds like they... You know, Bellinger and Snell, I kind of get the impression those two could drag a while. Um, yeah, I have my opinions on Bellinger. There's a lot of reports out there that they're not willing. No one's willing to go over seven years. And if that's really what's the hold up right now, if I'm the Giants, I'd easily go off for an eighth year for like 224 mil, which is 28 a year annually, which I think would be a great fit for both of them. But especially because if you were willing to give essentially the same you know, average salary to Carlos Correa for 13 years. I don't see how you're not willing to do that for a guy like Cody Bellinger that really should fit all of the things that a guy like Farhan wants, which is a great defender, offensive player, base running, versatile. You know, it's just kind of everything. The only thing is just his exit velocity isn't great, which whatever. So, you know, it remains to be seen, but I really like the Jorge Soler signing. I would like it a lot more if they can get one more guy that's an actual middle of the lineup hitter. I think he's a great complementary to that, and you could have good protection there, as well as we really hope that Jung Hu Lee and maybe Tyro, or if Matos works his way up into this two hole, you could end up with a pretty solid lineup and take a ton of pressure off of some of the kids like Marco Luciano and Patrick Bailey. Um, to perform at, you know, or to produce at high levels. So uh, remains to be seen. Uh, it's a really good move. I will give Farhan his credit for this one. I really like the deal. And at the very least, uh, we should have some entertainment with, you know, some of the balls Solaire is going to hit. You know, I, I've, I've kind of a running poll I'm going to put out there that I, I'm curious which one he does first is hit the Coke bottle or put one in or hit us be the first right hander to hit a splash hit. So uh, at, at the very least, batting practice should be entertaining. But that's all I have for this time, and I will catch you all next time.